a little video on the solar panels that are here too on uh the barn here and then there's one over there too but yeah uh so tell us allison about them um, back in 2004 i think it was 2004. um the board of public utilities had grant money and they wanted to um push they had a large push to make new jersey be one of the larger solar electricity producing states mm -hmm. um and so they had this grant that um, we found out about where they would pay for 75 percent of the cost to purchase and install solar system so we said yes immediately we didn't yeah. even have to think about it and uh the system itself uh is sized to produce no more than 85 percent of the power that we use um basically what they wanted us to was to not be a generator they wanted us to be like a, a backup generator for them you have to be hooked into the grid yeah because you push it out yeah we're um, not free from the grid so on a real bright sunny day our meter's running backwards yeah um and at night our meter runs forward and hopefully at the end of the year our meter is at zero so it's all about self sufficient energy then too because well, it's, it's yeah about... it's not just self-sufficient it's about clean energy clean yeah um, we only have one earth that's it so uh, my feeling is this this little corner of of the earth is our responsibility and and it's our responsibility to not misuse it to keep it as clean to make it as rich um and and not rich money wise to make it as rich um, soil wise mm -hmm. um, as is possible and you know it's our it's our responsibility yeah well i think you're doing well with it i you know i i, I hope so the biggest, or, or at least you're not go d depleting it the way the trends are across yeah. a lot of new jersey we almost did um at one point we had heard of scotch island cattle we had 14 and um it was the wrong thing for this property yeah it, it cannot support that many cows we ended up selling them to a good friend of ours, our friend Peter, who's got the um, dairy farm. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, we had about 20 sheep, and that was too many. We're trying to get, I'm trying to keep us to the number of sheep where the pastures, we can rotate them through the few number of pastures that we have and always have good forage for them to eat. And what what specific indications with the cattle and spe specifically did you could you tell that they were destroying the land or too hard on the land for I'll show your, you? Yeah, I'll show you a good example. Because because you have uh, you have a lot of skills and education that newer farmers might not they might make like the that. same mistake. Okay, so it's it's beaten down. It's kind of like a sacrifice field. Beaten, eaten down. Um, eaten, eaten down. It's not able to regenerate itself. So you take a look at that, and then you take a look at over there. Yeah, it's lush. And you can see how lush and green that is. We turn the sheep in and out of that. We had the ram, just one sheep, in here for too long. Mm -hmm. um, and we should have turned him out into this next field, which he is, yeah, he's now able to go in and out. So when he comes out, he won't even touch this. Yeah, sure. He'll go right over yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, that looks a lot tastier there. Yeah. So that whole top of the hill looked like this in a very short period of time, which means then you're depleting the land, you've got to buy hay, all of a sudden you're transporting hay that you shouldn't have had to transport. Um, it's just not right. Yeah. Well, you've got a very good sense of it, so well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. After, after 40 yeah, years, yeah. I better... <laughs> yeah no no well that's good that's yeah. something there's to hand lot, down there's a lot to learn there's a whole lot to learn um i'm not from a farming background neither is roger um so one of the things about being a small farmer in this area there's no infrastructure there's no one to learn from yeah um you can't call up your neighbor and say oh come over here and take a look at this because i don't know what's going on because none of your neighbors know any of this yeah um it takes us 45 minutes to drive to sussex to pick up our feed the feed around here is priced for people that have pets yeah. it's not priced for farmers um so we have to drive with a um, uh, a trailer up to sussex and pick up our feed um the there are no vets that do house calls for pigs or for sheep um so i'm the midwife mm -hmm. um you have to learn to give your animals shots you have to drive up to sussex once again 
to get any kind of shots that you might have to give your animals if you ever do. Because the vets around here don't even know how to, you know, figure out what it is. Uh, fencing, everything. I mean, it's just the tools, um, things for shearing, shearing sheep. It's a big job. It's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. There aren't any sheep shearers that live close to here. Yeah. You know, our sheep shearer lives about an hour away. With some of these, because uh, because I feel like you're evolving things into your repertoire of what you do here, like now you're doing weaving even. Um, have you, I don't know how long YouTube's been around that you've been able to watch some YouTube videos here and there. Have you? I haven't. Okay, because um, that's a resource some people use, or just YouTube, like maybe even a video like this could right. be for somebody like else's books. use. Okay, no, and <laughs> that's really fine. Like yeah, books. yeah. I like books and I like pictures, um, and I like I like going to workshops and trying to. Yeah. To, I like workshops are neat. Oh, you meet you meet some great people the and best. yeah, yeah. The most recent workshop we went to was uh, about two and a half years ago. It was at Peters Valley, and uh, we took a five day workshop in Navajo weaving. I say we. Roger went with me, and he took the workshop, too, which was really fun. Yeah. He was the only guy in it. Um, <laughs> but I like to do that. I like to I like to learn with my hands. Yeah. Um, so that's how I learned how to weave, was yeah. at that workshop. Cool. Yeah, I love workshops. Yeah. The, the best workshop, and if Roger were here, he would just be raving about it. The best workshop we ever went to was a five-day workshop in Mississippi. Huh. Um, that must have been an experience. Farming with draft horses. And so you would get up every morning, at six every morning, you and everybody in the class. You'd have breakfast at six. You'd go out and you'd curry the horses and you'd clean them and you'd make sure that they were sound. Um, and then you'd harness them and you would be out working with the horses in fields and learning how to, learning how to drive the horses and, and how to work the equipment. We were in tears when we left. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was the best workshop ever. Huh. That sounds really neat. Yeah, it was great. So, but once again, infrastructure. You can't learn any of that close by. Yeah, yeah. There's just nobody to do yeah, it. It yeah. just doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. Unless you live in Mississippi, I guess, right. where they still they still have that. Right. That's interesting. Now, on the other hand, smart farming on the scale that we do here, you can make a living doing at this time, at this day and age, you can make a living. Because people love to come to farms now. Yeah. They understand it, they get it, they taste the food, they understand how good it is, and they're willing to pay. They're willing to pay the price that, that we have to, to charge. Um, our vegetables, I charge about the same that they get for regular vegetables in the supermarket. So our vegetables are actually cheaper here. Mm. Um, our meat is more expensive because we have to drive 45 minutes to get the feed. And because we have to buy the feed in 50 pound bags, we don't have the facility to buy it a ton at a time. Um, but they're willing to pay for that too. So if you, if you manage your small farm well, and I tell kids when I talk to them about it, this is your dream, it's a good dream. You, you're not gonna get rich, but you're gonna live well and you can do it. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there.